Welcome to RPG Community College. Today, I got a build guide for the character that I've been playing in Path of Exile's new Blight League. It is a Ignite-based Ascendant that uses Scorching Ray, Armageddon Brand, and Vol Fireball every now and then. I will have links to a leveling skill tree and an endgame skill tree for Path of Building down in the description. If you don't know what Path of Building is, um, Google it. It will change your life. Uh, about the build though, this is a great solo cell phone build. All of the gear is easily farmable and you are able to get a lot of defense and offense from the skill tree, making transitioning to maps very easy because of the low gear requirements. This build also has a lot of potential to become a pretty potent boss killer. With the addition of fire damage over time multipliers on the tree, Scorching Ray received a very nice damage increase, and Armageddon Brand is great for clearing maps while also being able to contribute a good chunk of its damage to your single target due to just how it mechanically functions. I've not been able to get my hands on a 6 link yet, but a 6 link Scorching Ray with a 5 link Armageddon Brand can push over 1 million Shaper DPS in Path of Building with no flasks or inappropriate buffs checked. Most of my flasks are defensive though, uh, they give me a lot of evasion and move speed, which is important for making the build feel smooth to play. Because we use flame dash mainly for movement, you're going to be running around a lot when it's on cooldown, so investing in the move speed is going to be important. I also get onslaught and phasing from uh, Abyss Jewel, which goes a long way to helping the build feel just better to map with. And the build handles the blight encounters pretty well in normal maps. You're able to lock down multiple lanes with Armageddon Brand and Ignite Proliferation helps spread the damage around. Vol Fireball really helps uh, in this though. I usually just use a lot of Meteor Towers and Flamethrower Towers while boosting them up with the Empowering Towers. And throwing down like a Chill Tower or a Minion Tower here and there to create choke points isn't a bad idea either. But Vol Fireball really gives you some breathing room and is up all the time because of how many monsters are in Blighted Maps. So spamming this to clear away the trash mobs and having the meteor towers focused on the rares and help with the uniques has been my go-to strategy. For the build's defenses, I use a combination of block and evasion. These two defensive layers synergize really well. Because evasion is not a pure RNG system, it is entropy based. This means that your chance to evade an attack will dynamically change to make it so that over time, you evade the percent of the attacks that is listed in your character sheet more or less. For example, if you have a 50% chance to evade, and you evade an attack, the next attack made against you will have a 0% chance to be evaded, so that overall, you have evaded 50% of the attacks made against you. This makes evasion a much more reliable form of defense, and more rewarding to actually invest into. You can abuse this interaction with block though, because when you block an attack, it counts as a hit, it just deals 0 damage. So when you block, it will increase your chances of evading the next attack while taking zero damage because of how evasion functions, making stacking these defenses together on your character very effective. On this build, I get most of my evasion from flasks though, but if you want to play in a trade league, you will have better access to the item base types that you want, but we still are in a side of the tree with no increases to evasion, so flasks are going to be the best way of boosting that up. I chose the Chieftain and Inquisitor nodes for my Ascendancy. Chieftain lets you cover enemies in Ash, and Inquisitor makes nearby enemies take 10% increased elemental damage. These two things combined result in a huge DPS increase that you get access to without having to do Uber Lab, which is one of the reasons I chose Scion for the Night build. The Scion has easy access to sources of increased damage taken that are more valuable than the straight more damage from an Elementalist or a Trickster. And Shock is something that is very easy to get nowadays either from Vault Lightning Trap or a Focus Mod on your ring, making the Elementalist even less desirable. If you wanted to play hardcore though, Trickster is the way to go, because it has way more defense than a Scion could ever get. But I wanted a build that could get enough damage, defense, and resist in the tree to make starting off and solo cell found as easy as possible, which because of the Scion's starting position on the skill tree, she has some very comfortable and efficient pathing to all of these things. On top of not needing to do Uber Lab to receive a massive DPS increase, this is what made Scion a very tempting choice. Let's actually take a look at the leveling skill tree and I'll go over this uh, pretty quickly. This is what my tree looked like uh, around level 70. I started off as a Scion and went through the mana cluster and just worked my way straight up to elemental overload. 
And then I went over and grabbed Dark Arts. Dark Arts combined with Elemental Overload early on, gonna be a big enough damage increase to make leveling much, much easier. And grabbing Mind Over Matter early on too is something that you can do. I help out Alira for the flat mana regen and the resists, because it just makes leveling very easy. Uh, I do spend 20 regrets uh, later on to change this over to Aramir's reward to get the two skill points. If you want to save yourself 20 regrets, you could just take the two skill points, but again, I just like having the mana regen and resists while I'm leveling, especially on my first character. It just makes things a lot easier. And it makes grabbing Mind Over Matter early on uh, much more safer, because you can also do the quest to get the Survival Secrets Cobalt Jewel, the Golden Hand quest in Act 2. This gives you a little extra damage and more flat mana regen. And when you combine this with the mana nodes that we get from the Siren starting area, your mana is going to basically instantly refill, making Mind Over Matter very effective early on. Then after I grab Elemental Overload, Mind Over Matter, and Dark Arts, I head straight over to Runebinder. For leveling, I do use Stormbrand combined with Stormburst. I use that until probably after I kill Dominus, and then I'll switch over to Armageddon Brand plus Scorching Ray. You can't get Armageddon Brand until Act 3, and on a sign you actually can't even get Combustion until you do the library quest, which is kind of lame. So it's probably best to just use Stormbrand plus Stormburst for leveling until you're able to switch. Then you get Ignite Proliferation in Act 4, and that makes the AoE on Armageddon Brand feel a lot better, because we don't really get too much AoE investment in this build. We rely pretty heavily on Ignite Prolift to make the clearing feel good. After getting Runebinder though, I usually head down and grab Constitution and start and just dip into the Scion life wheel a little bit, and after that it's pretty much you just grab kind of whatever you need, uh, like as you need it. Hitting in the Templar starting area is a very point efficient place to pick up resistances and life, little decks, cast speed, move speed. The Witch starting area is going to be big for spell damage, uh, more resist and cast speed, little mana health nodes too. She also has a very, very strong mana regen node. You get Elemental Penetration over here to the left, along with a little Fire Damage over multi Time Multiplier. Uh, these two nodes right here, the Faith and Steel and the Armor and Energy Shield nodes, these are probably the first two nodes I'd get rid of as I got better gear and more resistances. As you can see in this tree, we actually get 67% to all of our resistances, which makes gearing up for like transitioning into maps like very easy. And you can get these res resistances pretty early on while leveling too. And not really having to worry about your items while you're leveling just makes the whole process faster and more efficient. And using brand skills while you're leveling is just a fast way to level period. For a starter build, this has a, a lot of very nice benefits. That's pretty much it for the leveling, leveling build, but let's take a look at the what the character looks like right now and kind of how I build it for the end game. And basically all I've done here is I've switched over to using stabs. So I've grabbed the staff block nodes and the mana clusters around them. I filled out all the life and the fire damage over time multiplier damage clusters that are very close to the other clusters that we've already invested in. And I've picked up uh, a couple more jewel slots. Uh, in my jewel slots here, I've got a abyss jewel that gives me a chance to get onslaught on kill and phasing on kill. This makes clearing and mapping um, much more smooth. And I would recommend getting this somewhere in your build if not on your jewels, like on your gear, anointed onto an amulet. I've actually, for my amulet anointment, I got Arsonist, because it gives me fire damage over time multiplier and 24% increased fire damage, which is a very nice DPS boost. Also another trick I use in the build is a Fevered Mind Jewel, because we get a ton of mana regeneration, and mana flasks in this patch are actually good. If you get the Endless suffix, you can basically span them just as you get charges and they'll never run out and it just it basically just gives you infinite mana it's just a stupid amount of mana sustain so you can use something like a fevered mind jewel and i also grab arcane capacitor here which is a new node that gives you 10 percent increased effect of arcane surge per 200 mana you spend so this synergizes really well with uh the fevered mind jewel and is very powerful especially when you have a level 20 arcane surge that is going to be giving you 20 percent more damage you know as a buff, so if you're able to get 50% increased effect of Arcane Surge, that this node right here pretty much gives you 10% more damage if you're able to spend 1000 mana in 4 seconds, which with a cast rate of 3.3 on a Scorching Ray that costs 81 mana, we barely do. It's kind of unrealistic to think you're going to have that up all the time though, because you're just not, but if there was one thing I would like to get more of on this build, it is cast speed. 
because getting like four casts a second on Scorching Ray is a pretty big just quality of life uh, feature just getting those max stacks up because that's one big downside of Scorching Rage. You kind of got to charge it up a little bit before you really start seeing this 934,000 Shaper DPS really come into effect. Which it takes, uh, you need eight stacks, you need three, 3.3 stacks a second. So it just takes a little over two seconds for you to get to your maximum amount of damage. And just making that faster is, of course, better. It also makes you burn mana faster, which increases the effect of Arcane Surge, giving you more damage faster. And I hear in Path of Exile, faster is better. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Now let's head on over and take a look at what my gear is looking like. Probably the first thing you'll notice about all my gear is that there is a lot of Elder items. That is because we're using the Blasphemer's Grass Unique Gloves, which are very easy to farm, even in Solo Cell Found. All you gotta do is spawn Elder on a white tier map, and you'll have a 50% chance of getting these. Because the only items that can drop from a white tier Elder are the gloves or the belt. So if you do a little number crunching and you whip out your calculators, you'll eventually come to the conclusion that there is a 50% chance for these to drop from a white tier elder. And these gloves make it so that every other piece of elder equipment we have is going to give us plus 4% to our damage over time multiplier, which is going to give our Scorching Ray and Ignites a pretty big damage increase. Uh, it's kind of hard to get over 5k life in this build. You really got to get nice life rolls on everything. Which I could definitely have better ones on my helm, my chest, and my boots. But I did manage to get two T1 life rolls on my rings. And I got a T1 life roll on my belt as well. The gear is pretty standard though. Um, just elder items. And I alt regal crafted them. Just basically to for life and resistances. And I did the same thing with the rings. Just get a high life roll on a resistance based elder ring and craft resistances on it. The necklace is another really important part of the build. Because uh, it has 0.4% of fire damage leeches life. These are pretty easy to get from blight encounters. You get these just kind of randomly out of the armor chests sometimes. Or not the armor chest, the jewelry chests. Or you can also get these from the temple. From the apex of Atsawadl. If you upgrade the fire room all the way. They can drop amulets that give you fire damage leeches life. You can also craft these on a elder base amulet, but I haven't been lucky enough to get one of those to drop yet, but that will probably be something that I spend the rest of my alterations on crafting a nice fire damage leeches life elder amulet. The staff, I got lucky, I dropped a searing touch. You absolutely do not need this. It is a very nice staff for the build though, but you can farm Jungle Valley to get the Flora's gift cards, and that's going to give you a 5 link staff, and you just alteration until you get you know, plus one, plus two to level your fire spell gems. And then you just uh, augment regal craft on fire, master craft on fire damage over time multiplier. And you basically have a steering touch. With a little luck, you could even craft something that's better than this. A uh, quick note though, if you want to do that, you need to actually have a staff. Like you can't have a war staff. It'll say at the top of the item, whether or not it's a plain staff or a war staff. War staffs cannot roll plus two to all level of fire spell skill gems, they can only roll plus level two socketed spell skill gems, which is definitely not as good. For my flasks, I just have a instant bleed removal flasks. An enduring internal mana flask is very, very strong. This is definitely a must have for the build. You want to get an enduring mana flask of something useful. I just beast crafted on the immunity to freeze and chill because I mean, that sucks when I just be immune to it. A Witchfire Brew, really useful. Or Damage Over Time build. We benefit from the Despair Curse. Increased damage over time. Kind of self-explanatory. Quicksilver Flask of Reflexes. Just makes mapping feel a lot better and buffs up our evasion by quite a bit. And the Of Reflexes mod on the Quicksilver does stack with the Stim Knight Flasks. 100% uh, increased evasion rating. And then we ha also have a Jade Flask to bump up the base evasion even more. And all three of these combined give us about a 46% chance to evade attacks. Combined with our 35% chance to block, we actually rarely ever get hit. We, uh, we even have 25% chance to block spell damage, which is not ideal. You, you of course want more, but it doesn't hurt. And having things like Blind Up really just allows you to sit there and face tank bosses while you're charging up your Scorching Ray and getting in those big deeps. For my gems though, there's not much, uh, there's not really anything too special going on. I got Armageddon Brand, socket into my chest, Combustion, Ignite Proliferation, Immolate, Arcane Surge, Scorching Rays on the Staff, Burning Damage, Infused Channeling, Efficacy, Elemental Focus, got Herald of Ash, Flame Dash, Faster Casting, Brand Recall in the Gloves, 
And I cast one damage taken. Steel skin with clarity in the boots. In the Elder Helmet, I have Fireball, Fork, Ignite Prolif, and Combustion. Fork plus Ignite Prolif on Vol Fireball gives it a huge amount of clearing potential. Fork is by far the best support gem that you can use on a Vol Fireball for clearing. And in the Elder Helmet, I also have a level 18 burning damage rolled onto it there. So this is technically a 5 link for my Vol Fireball. And in the boots, I also have an increased duration gem, but this is not at all mandatory. It's just something that was on there. Really the most important part about these boots is that they give me a decent life roll and a very high resistance roll. The increased duration is just something that's there. Uh, on the chest, I did get a 7% of physical damage from hits taken as fire damage. This is really nice because physical mitigation is something you're going to want to get. We have a pretty low health pool, so getting stunned is a thing. So you really want to mitigate that physical damage. And things like this, and I also run the Lunaris Pantheon. So you really just don't want to get stun locked. You can run Brine King as well, but I like the physical damage mitigation and the move speed from Lunaris. But Brine King is going to be a smarter choice to run in higher tier maps when things are doing more damage. That is going to be all for the video. If you're new around here, enrollment is free. If you'd like to continue your education, all you have to do is like and subscribe. If you want to go that extra mile, I do also have a Patreon account in which you can find the link to down in the description. Thank you for watching, and I wish you the best of luck in all of your endeavors, and I hope to see you again soon.